Hello everyone. Today I came with a very interesting topic. Here in this video, I will show you how to generate or get an Azure Access token from Copilot Studio. Generally, we use to generate an Access token for API authentication using the Postman tool. Now in this demo, I'll show you how we get an Azure Access token from the Copilot Studio very quickly. In the first part of this video, I'll show you what the steps are to get an access token using the presentation. Then I'll take you to demo part. So let's get started. So basically this is a five-step process. First, you need to register the app in the Microsoft Azure portal, and then you need to configure API permissions. Then we need to generate client's credential and then we need to get tenant ID and client ID. Then get the access token using Copilot Studio. This is how finally we can get the access token. So first you need to go to Azure portal and then from the app registration section, you need to register a new app. Then you need to configure the API permissions from the Then you need to configure the API permissions from the API permission section where you need to add permissions and need to select Microsoft Graph and based on your requirement, you can select your API. For this demo, as a sample, I have added these two APIs, user.read and sites.read.all, then granted admin consent. Then you need to generate client secret from the certificates and secrets menu and then you need to copy that secret value and save it securely. Then for the application registration overview page, we need to copy tenant ID and application or client ID. These are needed for the endpoint setup, right? Then go to Copilot Studio and add an HTTP request action and method as post. And this is the endpoint and this should be the headers and this is the body. By now, I have shown what the steps are involved to get an access token from the Azure portal. Using Copilot Studio. Before going to Copilot Studio, let's keep this setup ready for my API endpoint call, right? Now, I'll go to Azure portal. So this is the app registration I did from the app registration section. And I have copied this client ID in the notepad. I have copied this tenant ID in my notepad. These two values I need from here for my API endpoint setup. Then I have created this client secret. And this is client secret I have created you can create by clicking on this new client secret link menu, right? Then I went to this API permissions menu here from here. I have added these two APIs, user.readinsights.read.all. Then, granted admin consent for my tenant. So you can add a permission in this way. Click on the add a permission link and select the Microsoft Graph API delegated permissions. Then you can select your list of APIs that you need. I'm not getting into that. So my app registration is done with all required configuration. I have copied all the three required values like client secret value and this client ID and tenant ID in my Notepad Plus. I'll set up my configuration file in Notepad Plus here. So this part is done. App registration is done and API permission is done and client secret generation is done and this is the secret value. Here is my client secret value, which I got from the Azure app registrations. And here is my tenant ID and client ID. This is the API endpoint. I have to configure it. This API endpoint we need to call and this is the syntax of that endpoint. And this is the, the actual configuration of that endpoint. 
Here I have to replace the tenant ID with my tenant ID, which I got from here right. Then for the headers, I have added content type equal to this. And here I will just copy this and use in Copilot Studio. I'll use these values in Copilot Studio, so this will make my job easy. So for the API body part one, have this, and this is the syntax, what I need to pass, and this is the actual value I have configured here. So client ID equal to is nothing, but my client ID from the Azure app registration and client secret is also nothing, but the secret value of Azure app registration. The JSON shown on the notepad is needed for the API output. Now, I will go to my Copilot Studio and show you my HTTP request action setup. I was explaining this endpoint where method type is post. I have selected then, I moved to the headers and body section. For the content type in the headers, I passed this value. And for the body type, I have selected as raw content. I have passed this value this way, right? So this is the value I have constructed, which has client ID, client secret, and this is how I passed here. And this is the content type as I'd shown in my notepad from here. Then I am storing this HTTP response header in this variable here now. I am storing the HTTP request response output in a variable. Now, I'll show you here why I need JSON, which I copied from my notepad. Here, the API output I will get as an object so that I can extract the token. Type and access token value right. So for that, what I did is I will give you an example here. For the API response output, I will select the response data type as from sample data and then click on the get schema from sample JSON link. Where I have pasted this sample JSON, once I save this, it will be converted to the record data type automatically. See, Automatically, it got converted to a record, and now the schema is a record, right? Now I can easily extract the token type and access token value dynamically. Because of that, I have added this sample JSON. So this is how I have done my actual HTTP request configuration. And finally, what I'm doing is here, I'm just displaying the token type and access token in the message node. Here the request token type and the access token value are dynamically coming. And in this message node, I am just concatenating the token type and access token value with the expected format for the calling application. For example, after the bearer, one space, then the token value. I have implemented these dynamically. You can use this one in your actual implementation while you're doing integration with SharePoint or any other applications, right? Now I will test this agent. By the way, I have used the Copilot Studio out of the HTTP request action which you'll get it from the advanced send HTTP request action menu. This is the one I have added. Now I'll test this. One, so to trigger this topic, I will type something like get. Access. Token. From Azure. Yes. I got the access token. I'll explain you. Here. Token type came as bearer. And this is the access token value. This is the access token I got from my Azure portal. And this is the dynamic access token. So if you want to pass in your integration calling application, 
you can pass this one directly. I have constructed this value dynamically using the string concatenation function. Right, so now I will show you very interesting thing. As this token value is not a human readable format, I will show you how to decode this value in human readable format. So that you can ensure that this is the correct access token value. This tool jwt.ms. You can verify this is coming. Paste the access token value. Then your access token value will be decoded automatically. I can see that my access token value came from my. You can verify your app registration name and ID for your access token value. Intended app registration, which is get Azure access token from Copilot Studio. Description of each decoded attribute of your access token. This is the same name as my app registered in Azure portal. Right? You can see both names are matching. This is the app ID and let's verify this in Azure app registrations. This is my app ID in Azure app registrations. This app ID also matching with the app ID got from a jwt.ms tool. One very important thing I must say here is that sometimes what will happen is you will get the correct token value, but your authentication will fail due to the unauthorized access error. So there could be many reasons, but one of them could be your endpoint configuration problem. For instance, what I mean is, check what is the value. You see for the AUD attribute from the JWT.ms tool, this value has to be matched with the scope parameter in the API body content that you have passed. See the content of the body section where at the end of the string. You will see the scope parameter. Here, we see the scope value is the same as what we saw in the JWT.ms tool for the AUD attribute. If these scope and AUD values don't match, though you get the access token, you'll get an unauthorized error. That's all for today. I hope you liked and enjoyed this demo and learned something new today. If this helped you, please consider subscribing to my channel. In the upcoming days, I'll come up with many trending videos on Microsoft's latest technologies, like Microsoft Copilot, Gen AI, Power Platform, Power Apps, Power Automate, Power Pages, SharePoint Online, Artificial Intelligence, and many more. Kindly be with me and help me to grow on this journey. Thank you.